And there was something really kind of comforting and, and assuring in hearing that there, that there was a prescribed by a higher power time for everything in our lives. As a really hyper child, in a hurry to do and experience and see and be everything, that was comforting to me somehow. As Spirit would have it, the theme for January, it's way too close to home for this one. A time to be still and a time to take action. That's our theme. I have a great mastery of the time to take action. It's the other part that's kind of the challenge for me, the time to be still. So I closed out 2014 sicker than I've been in 10 years. I had all these fabulous plans for the end of the year, and I had a booking right at the beginning on January 4th, and I missed everything, because I was flat out, wiped out in bed for almost two weeks. And I, so in my heart, I recognize and respect that time and quiet reflection is really extremely valuable and can be very revealing and guiding, yet making Time for that is really, anybody else have a challenge making time to, to get quiet? I see he has nodding. Yeah, okay. Well, Spirit's always communicating. Sometimes I'm listening, but more often I'm talking. <laughs> Guilty. My mind is a constant whir of chatter. So Ernest Holmes teaches, to him who can perfectly practice inaction, all things are possible. Now, when I, when I read that, my ego mind goes nuts. But then I look and I see that Lao Tzu, 2,500 years earlier than Holmes, said, the master acts without doing, and everything gets done. So it seems to me that this concept's been around for a while. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So we ask our busy selves, how can things possibly be accomplished by a person who is perfectly practicing non-action. I mean, it seems inconceivable. Yet, when we can put this into action, or non-action, such as the case may be, it can be really transformative. And I do know that kind of what happened for me in my being flat out sick, and I was really sick, I had a temperature, and I just wanted to sleep, but I had a splitting headache. So I couldn't sleep. So I just kind of had to lay there and be really quiet. And my head hurt so much that I, it wasn't busy. And it was kind of amazing how much stuff I sorted out from 2014 and how much clearer my direction for 2015 came, started to come to me. A weird thing. So what became clear to me as I was forced to rest was that I had been taking on too much. But I had gotten so caught up in the rat race by taking on too much and doing too much and relying on my personal hard work and had allowed my life once again to shift really pretty grossly out of balance. I was a human doing, but I wasn't a human being. Does that make sense? And it started to occur to me that the being, the human, the being of being human, is actually really a lot more powerful and a lot more opening and you can accomplish a lot more in that state than a human doing. We like the balance of the seasons Winter, spring and fall It's all
that everything can shift. And it's a concept that is new to me. I mean, when we're in that place, we know it. At least I know when, when, I'm really, when I really have surrendered and released it, things just become easier for me. And I'm not struggling against the human doing thing, and I'm more being. Holmes teaches us we don't make anything happen. I think that's interesting. We don't make anything happen. We let it happen through us. There's a world of difference in the way we conduct our lives when we understand the difference between that. And I confess, I only have a partial understanding. I'm aware when it's happening and when I'm allowing it to happen, but the rest of the time, I get stuck in thinking I'm in control and I'm the one that has to, has to make it all happen. Anybody else have to make it? I gotta make it happen. It's up to me, it's all on my shoulders. But it's not, it's not. <laughs> It just is. When I stop chasing after what I think I need or think I should have <clears throat> or think I should be doing and I leave space, those things can pretty easily come into my life. But if I'm so busy filling up the vacuum with my big energy output, there's no room for that stuff to come in. I think the most difficult challenge for me is truly finding a balance. And I have to really consciously take time out.